Good morning, dear friends. We are beginning this Mass of the Solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In this Mass, we will be praying for all of you, praying especially for those who are sick here at War to We and around the world, and asking God's intervention and God's healing. We pray for our medical workers, that God may protect them and that God may bless their ministry. Today, I will also offer Mass for Thomas and Diana Dieter, who lost their baby yesterday. Pray and ask that God may grant them comfort in their loss. Pray for Maureen and Bill, who will celebrate their 48th wedding anniversary. And pray for Bernadette Clement, who passed away yesterday. Also pray for Adriana Hayden, who is recovering here at our hospital. Our opening hymn for this Mass will be City of God. We're going to sing City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep. A new day is dawning for all those who weep. A people in darkness have seen a great light. The Lord of our longing has conquered the night. Let us build a city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing for the Lord our light and our love has turned the night into day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins. May He bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who glory in the heart of your beloved Son and recall the wonders of his love for us may be made worthy to receive an overflowing measure of grace from that font of heavenly gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, You are a people sacred to the Lord your God. He has chosen you from all the nations on the face of the earth to be a people peculiarly his own. It was not because you are the largest of all nations that the Lord set his heart on you, or chose you. For you are really the smallest of all nations. 
It was because the Lord loved you and because of his fidelity to the oath he had sworn to your fathers that he brought you out with a strong hand from the place of slavery and ransomed you from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Understand then that the Lord your God is God indeed, a faithful God who keeps his merciful covenant down to a thousand generations towards those who love him and keep his commandments, but who repays with destruction the person who hates him. He does not dally with such a one, but makes them personally pay for it. You shall therefore carefully observe the commandments, the statutes, and the decrees that I am joined to you today. The word of the Lord. Mm. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, the Lord's kindness is everlasting to those who fear him. The Lord's kindness, kindness is everlasting to those, to those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O my being, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord's Lord kindness is everlasting to those, to those who fear him. He pardons all your iniquities, heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord's Lord kindness Lord. is everlasting for those who fear him. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. Not according to our sins does he deal with us, nor does he require, require us according to our crimes. The Lord's kindness is everlasting for those who fear him. Second reading. So reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows him. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God. Yet if we love one another, God remains in us, and his love is brought to perfection in us. This is how we know that we remain in him and he in us, that he has given us his spirit. Moreover, we have seen and testified that the Father sent his Son as Savior of the world. Whoever acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God remains in him and he in God. We have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever remains in love remains in God, and God in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Take my yoke upon you, says the Lord, and learn from me, for I am meek and humble. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. 
Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven on earth, for though you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. And you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy, and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank Grace you. to you, Lord. My dear friends, as I said at the beginning of Mass today, we celebrate the solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And I'd like to use for our reflection the Gospel reading and the second reading. And I'd like to focus on the words of the Lord. It says, Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. That we are restless is a given. Restlessness has become part of the human condition. In the words of St. Augustine, God, you have made us for yourselves, and our hearts are forever restless. And the only day they find rest is when they find you. And until we are able to find God, we are forever restless. You think about the restlessness and the anxiety that we carry every day in our hearts. Whether it's being anxious for our own safety or the safety of people we care about, we remain restless. Or the restlessness of human longing, the things we want, we always want something more, something else, something new, is that inability to satisfy. We are insatiable. And so I aspire for one thing and I get it, and tomorrow I forget like a kid. I spend so much time working for this. Suddenly it loses a flavor. I thought I was going to get from it. And then I set another goal, and I'm pursuing another goal. So forever, we constantly aspire for something, for something more. And yet, we seem never to be satisfied when we gather all of those things. Think about all that you have achieved in life. All the aspirations and the goals you have met in your own life. And yet, you still aspire, you still want something more, something else, something new. And I don't think that's just your problem. That's my problem. That's everybody's problem. Ask anyone, even the president, the governors, ask anyone. Ask the Pope. He will tell you. He is still restless. Because sadly, that is the state of the human heart. And so how can we learn to find rest? How can we learn to be restful? That's not an impossible dream. It is a realistic dream that we can find rest. And so the Lord offers us, says, come to me, all you who labor. That means all of you who have been searching for, you know, that rest and seeking for that rest in everything. There were those who fell look. If I could only marry this young lady, man, I would be the happiest man. And they got married, and that was the beginning of everything they never wanted in life. 
if I could only marry this guy, you know, if I if if he would only say yes and he said yes and then that was the beginning of everything, then I was wondering in life. If I could only get this job, man, I'll be so happy. Alright, you get that job and you get that promotion and you realize there was more responsibility that took away your joy from you. So so think about everything you always thought would make your life different and never did. So the Lord offers us a very simple equation. It says, come to me in case you are still laboring and hoping that you're going to find rest in something. Come to me. It says, take my yoke. That means take my model and learn. That means we have to go back to school and learn from the Lord how to be restful how to find rest. And when I look at the life of Jesus as a model, I see three things he did so well. He loved God the Father above all things. He loved himself. He loved others. That is the model I see to find rest. To love God above all things. And that seems to align with what St. Augustine said. God, you have made us for yourselves. And our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. So when we find God and fall in love with God, that is the first thing. Because it's, God, it's love for God that makes us see ourselves as objects of love. That I can fall in love with myself. I, I must fall in love with God, why? Because scripture says in the second, the second reading, God is love. Love is God. God is love. So for me to learn how to love things as they ought to be loved and love others as they ought to be loved and love me as I ought to be loved, I must understand what love is. That means, first, I must seek love itself. And that means, seek God, who is love. I think part of our restlessness is we apply or we attribute value, more value to things than they actually have. And so we go to them and, I, and, I, and appropriate them and realize they don't have the value I thought they have. We live in a world where we treat ourselves as things and treat others as things, usable, disposable, and dischargeable, and then treat things with greater value that ought to be ascribed to God, to humans, and to self. And that's what the Lord is trying to teach us. He says, come and learn from me how to relate to the world that God has given to you, how to relate to all of those things you aspire for. There's nothing wrong with aspiring towards all those things. They're all good. But you have to have the right balance of relationship with them. If you change the nature of their value and their worth, you go after them and replace love of self and love of God, of God and love of the other with all of those things. And they would never meet that need because that, that, that space, something must be so neatly fit into that openness to feel it. And only love of God, of self, and of neighbor does that. So I, I want us to go back at this time on this day where we celebrate technique, we celebrate divine love, God's love. That, that's why the heart is a symbol of love. So today is sacred heart. It's the solemnity of love, God's love for you, for me, and God's invitation to participate in love. So I want to say this to you, if you're listening to me. Take the time to take stock. Whether you truly have understood what it means to fall in love with God. I don't know anyone who doesn't know, any adult who doesn't know what it means to be in love. You know what it means to love. Ask yourself, have I truly fallen in love with God? Have I truly fallen in love with myself? Because it's impossible for me to be able to love someone else and treat them as God expects me to unless I'm able to translate the love I have for God on myself. I use a lens 
of God's understanding and God's nature of love to love myself and do the same to others. There are too many of us who don't love ourselves. We hate who we are. We complain about what God created in us. And it's impossible, it doesn't matter how much you try, you can never find joy and happiness if you have not fallen in love with yourself. If you have not been able to recognize the beauty that you are, it doesn't matter what anyone is saying to you. And I hope that today we are able to begin to listen to God tell us that in the words of King David, that you are incredibly, wonderfully, awesomely made by the Almighty God. You are deserving of love. You are deserving of respect. You are of irreplaceable dignity and value. Learn to love who you are. Fall in love today. It is self-love, it's not selfishness. Learn to fall in love with yourself. Love yourself. If you love yourself, you'll be amazed how that will change your love for your husband or your love for your wife, your love for your children, your love for the other. But unless you're able to love yourself first, it doesn't happen. You could never find joy and rest until you have learned that. That's what Jesus taught us. So when he says, come and learn from me, I think that's what he wants to model for us. Come and learn from me. Take my yoke. That means take my lens and see how I do. I love God above all things. And there is evidence everywhere in scripture. And then I love myself. And then I love the other. It says, love God above all things. And love the other as you love yourself. Three simple statements. If you learn to love, do those three. I'm telling you, before long you realize everything is aligning up for you. Everything is aligning up for you. May God who has called us and given us this amazing opportunity to reflect on what love means. Help us to love God above all things. Love ourselves through that image that God is putting us. And from ourselves, extend that love to others. The world is a beautiful place, but it's up to us to make it real. So always I like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are the delight of the Almighty God. That God is still in love with you. And this is 11.23. And God is still so madly in love with you. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was in kind of a virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Holy Father, the Pope. Pray for our Bishop, Timothy Broglie. Pray for all those called to the ministry of Christ's gospel. That God may inspire us in our lives and in our message to bring hope to a very desperate and despairing world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Amen. hear our prayer. We pray for an increase of God's love in our hearts, that through love of God, we may learn to love ourselves and love others as God commanded. We pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for the sick. Pray especially for those 
who have been so sickened by the coronavirus, those in critical care. Pray and ask that God may speak wellness over them today, that God may help them recover. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died at this time. Pray for Bernadette Clement, who passed away two days ago. Pray also for Ron Data, an infant who died yesterday. Pray and ask that God may grant them rest and that God may bring comfort to their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who celebrate anniversaries around this time. Pray for Maureen and Bill who celebrate their 48th wedding anniversary. And pray for Adriana Hayden who is battling her struggle in, the, in her disease. May God help her find healing and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I bring all your own intentions and concerns before God and ask that God may accept them and that God may grant your heart's desires. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a more, a more peaceful and just union here in our country. That God may help our lawmakers to establish laws that protect all, not some, but all of God's children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to pray with us and for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and they are for our death. Amen. Blessed I, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Look, O Lord, we pray on the surpassing charity in the heart of your beloved Son, that what we offer may be a gift acceptable to you and an expiation of our offenses. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly totally right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For raised up on high on the cross, he gave himself up for us with a wonderful love and poured out blood and water from his pierced side, the wellspring of the church's sacrament, so that one over to the open heart of the Savior, all might draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 